Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Glad to have you this morning. I'm uh, excited to be, the, be able to welcome you to worship this morning. Uh, Danny and Jill are in the mountains on vacation, so uh, there's, uh, you know, praying that they have just a wonderful week. And, and uh, but excited that you're here with us uh, in person and online. Just uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you, this is your first time, I want to encourage you in the seats in front of you, uh, find a yellow card, which I don't have in my hand, but uh, find a yellow card and fill that out for us so that we can uh, just know that you're here and drop you a card. And you can do that also online. You can go uh, there and, 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 and fill that card out as well online. So do that and let us know that you are with us this morning. Also on the back of that card is a place for prayer requests and, and, and praise reports and just encourage you to fill that out so that we as your staff can come alongside of you and be praying for you uh, throughout the week. Um, welcome to worship this morning on this fall uh, morning. Uh, so excited to, to feel the cool air as we come into worship this morning. And I just pray that God speaks to you uh, as we open his word, as we sing praises to him. Uh, so welcome to worship this morning. Let's stand as we uh, begin to worship. We're going to sing forever of his love come down this morning. Let's, let's just have a great time rejoicing and giving worship to the one who is worthy. I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love come down. Uh, you may be seated. 
Again, uh, welcome to worship this morning. I hope you're a little more awake now to, to, to worship Him after that. And just, uh, again, we, uh, we look forward to, to spending this time with you, this hour with you, just uh, learning more and, and growing in our faith uh, and our walk with Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, let me just share with you uh, the stuff that's going on this week um, or this coming weekend. We're having a marriage night here next Saturday night, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. Got a lot of couples already signed up, but you can sign up on your way out if you haven't done that yet. If you have any questions, you can you can ask one of us. Uh, and it's just going to be a great night of uh, you know, of just worshiping and 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 growing in our in our marriage relationships. And so be here for that. Be a part of that. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and just uh, see what God can do in, in, in your marriage, whether you're in a good place or maybe not such a good place. Uh, just uh, it's a night to, to really uh, focus in on our marriages. And so be here for that uh, if uh, that's something that you uh, want to do or need to do. Uh, as we come to this time every day, every Sunday, uh, of just an opportunity to be still and begin to, to focus on our relationship with God, uh, this opportunity to give to Him. Um, for, for his blessings that he's given us, uh, I just love the opportunity that we have to, to, to pray for each other and, and with each other. Um, and so let's just go uh, to the Lord right now in prayer as we, uh, as we continue this worship time. Father, I thank you for your presence here this morning. And God, as we gather as uh, your church, uh, Father, I just pray that as we worship with each other, Father, as we open your word, that, God, you would speak to our hearts. That, Father, as we talk about relationships uh, this morning, God, and I, I pray that, Father, you, uh, that you'll uh, just help us to look and, and spend some time in looking at our own heart and our own uh, walk with you, God. And Father, we know that you want to use us uh, in our relationships with others, Father, to point people to you and uh, through the gift of your son, Jesus, Father, that you created us to be in relationship. And so, God, I just pray uh, that you speak into our hearts, that you draw us closer to you. That, Father, when we walk out of here, that, God, we would be more like your son, Jesus. And, God, that we've made some decisions in our life, um, in our lives, Father, that would um, help us to live out our faith in a way that you can use the gifts that you've uh, blessed us with to really grow your kingdom and Father, to, to step into every relationship that, that you have given us, whether it be our marriage, Father, or our families, or at the workplace, or just with uh, the body of believers that we commune and, and have family, uh, community with, Father, just pray that, uh, that you would use us to strengthen every one of those relationships, God. Father, what a privilege it is to, to be able to gather together in person and online and, and just give this time to you. So, Father, do your work, do your transforming work, your changing work in each of our hearts as we as we spend this time together. Father, uh, again, Lord, we just want to be used by you. So change us, God. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Psalm 23 is one of my favorite passages. And in it, we learn how God is our shepherd takes care of us so many ways that he puts he leads us by still waters and he restores our souls and it says that he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies which tells me that even when the battle is raging even when the circumstances really are tough really when life is going in a direction that we didn't see and we didn't want even when relationships are at odds he's still feeding us He's still preparing a table for us at which we can dine. He is still there even in the mess. What a great God. What a good shepherd. In this song we're going to sing first, it says, I'll raise a hallelujah even in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah even when life isn't going the way that I want it to. Even when it feels really hard to take another step, I'm going to raise a hallelujah. Because I truly believe that in that worship of speaking the truths about God, about how good he is, and about praising him because he is worthy and he is worth our praise, I do believe in that. Healing comes and there's feeding and that's part of what we dine on at his table. So this morning, let's stand and raise a hallelujah. 
Senhor.
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the Jesus, you
to you, Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus. Praising you and thanking you for being our God, our Savior, our King, and our Lord. And we ask this morning that you teach us anew and afresh that God will sit in your presence and sing, smile, and obey. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, worship team. We're continuing our series this morning uh, called Family Matters, and just a, uh, a series about relationships. Uh, the first week, um, we talked about the five levels of relationships, really as it, uh, as it um, applied to uh, spiritual relationship, uh, starting with our relationship with God and, and all the way to the family of God. And then last week, we talked about, you know, in order to live out and you know, God's call on our lives in relationships that what he was calling us to do was to be more like Jesus, right? To imitate Jesus, to begin to model Jesus in our lives, uh, in every relationship, but specifically in our, you know, in our family relationships and in our parenting relationships to, to model Jesus, to model integrity, to observe teachable moments and point uh, others to Jesus and his principles of his word, to uh, to deepen our faith, uh, and to be every day trying to, to d grow d uh, deeper in our faith, to encourage one another and, and to learn in, in, you know, through difficulty. Uh, well, today I want to just talk to us heart to heart and really talk to uh, each one of us about what we need to do as, as individuals in order to, for God to use us in, in every relationship that we have. What are some of the things that we, uh, we need to do and some steps that we can take to be ready for God to use us? You guys know that I, I love football and that I'm a Gator and, uh, and I got to spend a little bit of time at, at, on the Gator team and, and it wasn't a very good day for us yesterday. Not a very good day, not a very good year. Uh, there used to be a saying back in the 70s, uh, as a Gator fan, wait till next year. Right, we've already started saying that again. We're bringing that back. Uh, let's wait till next year. And, uh, but I do, uh, you know, I, I always love sports and, and athletics. And I learned very early on that in order for me to be successful in any of those areas, uh, when it came athletically, uh, that it wasn't going to be because of my athletic ability uh, or my speed or strength or talent, any of that, that, it, that I was going to have to give everything that I could. I was going to have to give my whole heart, right? And you've heard me talk about that, uh, that my dad kind of instilled in me that, Monty, if you're going to make it in, in, in any, any of these things, uh, any of these stuff athletically, you need to play with a gumption, right? You need to give all your heart. And I realized in my early 20s that that's really what I had missing in my relationship with God that I only really loved God when it was convenient for me, when it was, for, you know, when it, there was something that I needed. And I learned as a, as a young 20-something that he was calling me to love him with everything that I had, with all of my heart, with all of my gumption. And so my life verse became Mark chapter 12, and, and I'm really going to focus on this in a couple of weeks, but Mark 12 says this, and you know it's a very familiar verse. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these, than these two. That, you know, if we're going to really be used by God, that we've got to love him. It begins in our relationship with God, and we've got to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, with all of our passion, with all of our energy, with all of our gumption. And as we do that, his Holy Spirit begins to transform us and change us and fill us up and, we, and, pour, and his love can pour out of us onto those around us. To love our neighbor, to love others with, all, with that same kind of love, that, that, that agape, sacrificial kind of God love. With all of our heart and all of our, our strength and, and, and all of our soul and all of our mind that we're going to need some help in these relationships that God is calling us to, some support. And you're right, we're going to need some help because there's going to be, you know, a crisis in our lives that's going to come and, and we need him. And in order to, to, to have him in our, in our lives, we've got to love him with everything that we have. Because this is what I've learned about us through the years. We are a triune being. And what I mean by that, there are, there are three parts to, to each of us. Like there's the spirit where we're created in the image of God, we're like God, and then there's the soul, which I like to include mind and, and will and emotions in that, in that part of us, and then there's the physical body. 
And all three of these need to work together. But what happens sometimes is they begin to compete against each other. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the spirit part of you in that moment was perfectly cleaned in an instant. Your past was erased and your spirit is perfect and holy. And and you can now stand before God when you get to heaven. But between now and heaven, the real work begins. The spiritual part begins to influence and have impact on the other parts. And sometimes when we get saved, some of those areas are immediately impacted by the spirit. And they are immediately you know, renewed and, 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 are, and he changes those things in us. But some of us really need the spiritual part to work on other areas. Because even though we're going to heaven, we still have issues, right? We still have issues. You got issues. I got issues. All God's children got issues, right? And so our, 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 our bodies have habits and addictions it wants to do. And our minds are, are messed up, as Kim likes to say, with stinking thinking. And honestly, what needs to happen is for the Holy Spirit to begin to, to, to you know, do His transforming work in our lives. And I've shared with you before the theological word for that is is sanctified. Sanctification is a biblical word, meaning that we are allowing the Holy Spirit to to regenerate us, to transform us, to change us, to be more like Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. That this, this, this new uh, person begins to, to be created and transformed by God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says it this way. Paul says it this way. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing and perfect will for your life. It's this process of transformation and regeneration, this process of change. And if we're honest, we all have some areas that we need some support in, right? And if we're really, really honest, some of us are maybe even on life support, so to speak, in some areas. We're just hanging on. Some of you here this morning are in critical condition in some areas of your life. And maybe it's your marriage, right? Or, or, or maybe it's the relationship you have with your children. Or maybe it's in your own heart. You know there's stuff going on that, that doesn't please God. And if you're really honest, it really doesn't please you either. And you need some life support. So I want to start this message this morning by saying if you are in critical condition, you know, in any area of your life, just know you can join the club, right? I share with you, I've always wanted to pastor a church that was real, that was authentic, you know, not coming in and trying to fake it on Sunday, that, that we don't come in here and act like, you know, I've got it all together. I've got it all together. No, you've got issues, Right? you got some things you need to work on. It's not that you don't love God. Or it's not that you're not going to heaven. But you still got some issues. And I want us to continue to be a place that we're comfortable saying that. Because you're looking at a guy that has some issues. I have some things that, that I'm working on. Some areas that I need support in. Some areas that I need to get better at. And I would say that's most of us, right? That's most of us. And maybe some of you are here this morning and you're saying, Monty, I've tried, it hasn't worked, and I'm I'm tired. And and maybe you're at that place where you're just going to give up hope of ever changing. Others of you say, Monty, that's just the way I am. Uh, I've even given that to God before and it's not going to change. You know, my, my granddaddy was angry, my daddy was angry, and I'm angry. It's just the Irish in me or whatever you you pick, right? No, that's the devil in you, right? And you need to 
We all need to kind of roll up our sleeves and with support from God, begin to work on those areas. Begin to work on that. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is in John chapter 11. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John chapter 11. We'll kind of be in there for a little bit. John chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. It's the story of Lazarus, which was Jesus' buddy, right? His, one of his, his best friends. It's, and, and Lazarus was sick. He was critically sick. It says this in, in verse 1. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. And he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. The Lord, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, and I want you to listen to this. He said, this sickness will not end in death. He says, no, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. And I just want to allow God to speak this into somebody's heart this morning. What you are going through will not end in death. You are going to make it. I want you to have and to hold on to that message of hope. You remember the story of Lazarus, right? He went on to die and it took two days for Jesus to get there. And when he got there, Lazarus was already dead and in the tomb. And one of the sisters came out to meet him. But Mary, um, she would not even come out. She was so upset uh, that he didn't come, that he didn't answer their prayer, that she was like, Jesus, just forget it. I'm not even coming out to greet you. So listen, no matter what your attitude is toward God today, whatever weariness is being produced in your life, in your marriage, or with your kids, maybe you've even repented so many times that you think you have worn out your repenter, if that's a word. And you're just like, forget it. I can't do it anymore. Listen, it will not end in death. Hang in there. Come these next few weeks. Uh, be a part of this, this, this body of believers. And let's see if the Lord will bring some life support to your life. Especially in those critical areas that maybe you're struggling with. So I want to begin at the first step of every recovery process. And that is exposure. To begin to be aware of what's going on. Listen, you and I can't fix something that you can't see or that you're not aware of or that you won't acknowledge. And so the question this morning is, where am I? What is my condition? And I, I want to give you uh, some vital signs that, that kind of point to different con conditions that maybe you're going through right now in your relationships. And the first one is this. I just call it drifting. Drifting. Maybe you're not in critical condition yet, but you're headed that way. And you would say, Monty, I'm drifting in my marriage. It's not what it used to be when we walked down that aisle. We're living like roommates instead of a married couple. It, it's not critical. You know, we're not saying the D word, but we are drifting. It's not like it used to be. Or maybe it's with your kids or other relationships. And let, let me just say, if more people would work on their lives when they were when they were just drifting, instead of waiting till they were critical, you get a lot more accomplished. Your relationships or whatever would be stronger. You know, where you just come in maybe for counseling and I'd see you come in and I go, oh, well, you know, what's up? What's the matter? And they go, you go, nothing. Just coming in for a checkup, right? Just coming in to, you know, to let you know everything's going great. It's kind of like pre preventative maintenance. Um, how many of you know that the oil change is a lot cheaper than the in engine change, right? Anybody have experienced that? I've, yeah, I've experienced that personally. <laughs> You don't wait till the car blows up before you get the oil changed. It's preventative maintenance. So are you drifting? Have you stopped putting energy into those areas of your lives and begun to drift? 
Jesus says this in Luke 21. He says, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close in on you suddenly like a trap. He says, Be careful, watch out, right? Don't just allow yourself to drift when it comes to your relationship with God because in your drifting, if you're not careful, yeah, this, the, that, that kind of stuff will just all of a sudden trap you. Or are you drifting? Uh, the second vital sign, it kind of shows a condition that maybe you're in is dying. You say, money, I'm already broke. You know, I'm already broke down. I, I'm past the drifting stage. I'm, I'm dying. My marriage is dying. Relationship is dying. I've shared with you before, I do, um, I do uh, a lot of funerals where the person in the casket is a lot more alive than the people in the seats. You're dying. And you say, you, you know, it's critical. Mind. What, what do I do? What do I do? Let me just say, don't be embarrassed about it. Share it with someone you trust. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9, Paul says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. God is in the business of, of bringing things back to life. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's in, you know, in, in, in the physical area. Maybe you're just physically fatigued. And that's bringing about a death in, in your life or in your relationships. In some way, you're just tired. You, you're, you're working too hard or going too fast. Life seems like it's going 100 miles an hour. And you need to just come to a place where you can just be still. And relax and begin to focus back on God. Begin to rely on Him and trust Him again instead of relying on, on your own strength. You're just physically fatigued. Maybe for you it's not necessarily physical fatigue, maybe it's emotional fatigue that's bringing about this dying in, in your life and in your relationships. You're just emotionally fatigued. But instead of, of bringing that stuff to God, you've just kind of been burying it inside of you more and more. Just kind of keep burying it, keep burying it. And, and, and it, doesn't take, it doesn't take but just a little bit of crisis. It's just a little thing that might happen in your life and you explode. You explode. For example, maybe you're emotionally fatigued and you're driving down the road and someone pulls out in front of you and you just lose it. Right? You ever had that happen? You just go crazy and, and you give him the, you know, the sign. You're just emotionally fatigued. Maybe for you, it's spiritually, uh, you're, you're spiritually fatigued. You just, you just have been moving away from the very one that can bring life. The third vital sign is deceived. You have no idea that you have problems. You, you think you are okay, but you, you're not, right? Um, you're deceived. You have people maybe around you that's trying to share truth into you, but you're just deceived, and that's a very dangerous place to be. Jesus says to the church of Sardis in, in Revelation 3, he says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of, of being alive, but you are dead. And Jesus says, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. He says, wake up. In those areas that, that, that you're dying in. You think you're alive, but you're not. Wake up and, and, and strengthen what remains. Move back into right relationship with God so that He can complete His work in you. And so my question is, what in my life, what in your life is in critical condition? And, and you need to answer that. 
you need to see the drifting or the dying or being deceived. What in your life is critical? And you not only need to answer that, but when you walk out of here, you know, uh, you need to make sure that you do something about it. You need to answer that in your own heart and mind. And then begin to ask God to do a work in that area of your life. Begin to, to seek God and, you know, and, and, and what your part needs to be in that and allow Him to begin to do His changing part in that area of your life. What area, what, what in your life is in critical condition that you need some life support in? We go back to that story in John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said to her, to Martha, He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will what? Will live. Yeah. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I mean, Jesus brings dead things back to life. He who believes in Jesus will live. God wants to bring an infusion of life into the dying, critical areas of your life so that He can begin to use you in the relationships of your life. And so this morning, I want to give you just five steps. And, and I don't usually do this. Uh, I'm not a big list person, but because it's, it's always it's harder than just the list, right? But I, I want to give you five steps this, this morning that, that can that you can do that can get life back into the critical areas of your life. Just a little life support. These steps will give you just a little life support so that you can begin to be the person that God's created you to be. So that you can begin to, to, to live in right relationship with Him and right relationship with others. The first one is this. Just make a decision to live. In any area of your life where there's a critical need, where you're drifting or dying or, or being deceived, the first step is to, to make a, a decision to live. In, in your marriage, make a decision to say, I am going to live. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make my marriage come alive, to come back to life. I'm going to make a decision today to live when it comes to my marriage. In my relationship with my kids, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to be all in when it comes to my kids. I'm going to make a decision this morning to live when it comes to the relationship with my kids. Those things that I'm struggling with, that I have an addiction to, that I have a habit of, I'm going to make a decision that I'm going to ask God to, to help me push those away. And I'm going to live without that stuff dragging me down in my life. In this area of my life, I am going to choose to live. And you say, well, my that's pretty simple, right? Make a decision to live. You think, that's, you think that'll work? Absolutely, I do. I mean, I, I, doctors will, will even tell you that, that the person's will to live is greater than the medicine sometimes that they inject in your body. So ask God to help you begin to initiate change and choose to live. Choose to live. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says it this way. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. He says, now choose life. And this is my favorite part of this, this verse. It says, now choose life. Why? So that you and your children may live. When I make a decision to live, whether in my marriage or in my fa family or wherever, you know what happens? It brings life to other people in my life, when I make a decision to live, it makes Kim happier because I've decided I'm going to do something in our marriage and our relationship to bring life back into it. It makes my kids happy. It makes the people around me live and be able to experience life. I choose life. It's a choice. Choose life. Let me just give you some life choices that I know will infuse life back into you. First, of course, is to, to make sure that you're in a personal and forever relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's where it begins. 
allow that to begin to infuse life back into your other relationships. Another one that will infuse life into you is to, to if, if you've never um, followed in, uh, him in believer's baptism. If you've never been baptized as a believer. I, I just want you to know that, that being obedient in that area of your life, to, be, you know, to follow the example of Jesus will infuse uh, you know, uh, life back into you. As you share with the people around you, those that you love the most, that you are a follower of Christ, a child of Christ. You have died to the old self and been raised up a new creation in Christ. It will bring an energy and a passion back into your life. Be a part of a Bible study. You know, begin to study God's word and begin to apply his word in the areas of your life. If use your gifts. And allow it to infuse life back into your relationships as you use the gifts that God has given you to, to point people to Him and to help other people begin to live. The second life support is renew your vision for life. I talked about uh, this a little bit in, in um, the dream message of several weeks ago, but to get a picture, or a goal, or a dream of what the finish line will look like. Imagine what your marriage would look like if you begin to treat him or her with love and respect and set a goal and draw a picture, you know, and write it down. Write it down. Uh, when the movie The Bucket List came out several years ago, many, many years ago now, I guess, I don't know, how many, but uh, Jack Nicholson, Morgan Freeman, you know, they got together and they made this bucket list, right? And I got so excited about that that I, you know, I, I went and made me a bucket list. Just a goal and, and dreams that I wanted to see God do in my life. You know, and I put it in categories. I got family, I got ministry influence, I got vacation kind of dreams or whatever. And I just began to write those down. In, in the family, one of my goals is that for Kim and I would celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. I haven't been able to check that off yet, but we're going in that direction. Right? And I want to do what I need to do with the support of my God to make sure that we get to celebrate that. Uh, I got another one here. I'd live to meet, for Kim and I to live and meet my great-grandchildren. <clears throat> Come on. Right? Uh, so there's some things that I, Choices that I have to make in order to, to ask God to help me get to that place. I've got ministry goals, right? One of my ministry, you know, some of these I've already got to check off along the way. Others I've added to. But one of my ministry goals was to pastor the rock for my whole life. And, and, I, and, I, and I wrote these down. And I've got you know, so many different areas of ministry and influence that I've asked God to, 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 to fulfill in my life. And I have, to, I have to do some things, my part of that, in order for those to be fulfilled. But I write them down. I dream about them. Right? I check them off. I add to. I get a picture. There's power in renewing your vision for life. Philippians 3 says this, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead, I press on toward the goal, the dream, the list, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I just double-dog dare you. That's a more term there. To just begin to ask God, to renew your vision for life. What He's called you to. What He wants to fulfill in your life. And those dreams, those goals, when it comes to your relationship with Him and your relationship with others. Number three, expose the enemies of life. The stuff that gets in the way, that chokes the life out of your marriage or out of your relationship with your kids or out of you know, the other relationships that God brings in your life. And you need to expose them and get rid of those. Those things that entangle you or hinder you from being all that God wants you to be. The enemies uh, of living the life that God wants you to have. And maybe for you it's just little things, right? Maybe the enemies are just little things that you need to get rid of and, 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 you know, and move out of your life. 
Maybe for you, you, you know, you, you, you just sit too long watching Netflix show after show after show after show and you need to let me get rid of that habit, right? Maybe for you, it's being too much on the social media world or the Internet or maybe video games, just little things that aren't necessarily bad sometimes, but they hinder you from experiencing the life that God has for you. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders, good and bad, right? And the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. We have to get to that place where we just are going to say no to sin. We're going to say no to sin, the sin that so easily entangles us and keeps us from running the race that God has called us to marked out for us every day God is faithful I hope you believe that but but let me tell you so is the devil and you can walk out of here today and and say man I did it I committed my life to God and that's that and I'm done nope Satan is coming after you this afternoon and the next and the next because that's his job to steal kill and destroy to try to bring some moral chaos into your life and your relationships. So we must say no to sin every day. Every day. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, avoid every kind of evil. I'm serious. I I want you to live, not just to, to do religion, but to fall in love with your God in a way that gives you the courage and the strength to say no to sin, begin to expose the enemies of your life. Number four, protect your life with accountability. Get somebody to hold you accountable. Have some accountability in your life, somebody that you trust, somebody that you have a relationship with. Maybe it's just one person, maybe it's a small group. Whatever, you know, a place where you can share the struggles that are going on. Where they can kind of give you a checkup, right? Where you can come and say, hey, you know that, you know, that, that I'm struggling in this area. Or, or they can say to you, how are you doing in this area that you know that, you know, that thing that's been hindering you from being all that God wants you to be. How are you doing with that? The sin that has entangled you has begun to kind of choke you before. Begin to choke the things that God wants to do and produce in your life. How are you doing with that? You need to bring some more people into this situation to hold you accountable and to make you stronger. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. And I call this my Mr. T-verse. You guys wouldn't know what that is. But Mr. T says, but pity the man. I pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Bring some accountability into your life. Someone that when you make a mistake, when you do fall, when you do mess up, that they're there to pick you back up and encourage you and hold you accountable and say to you, hey, quit doing that. Get rid of that thing that's hindering you. Protect the life that God wants for you with accountability. Listen, we can't live this life by ourselves. We need our God and we need each other. We need to get accountable. And then number five, and this is the most important one. The other ones will not work without this one. Live your life for God. The one thing that will help you in your life, that will give you life support and power to really live and not just survive, but to thrive, is your relationship with God. Live your life for Him. You try to do any of these other steps without God and you you know what you have? You just have another self-help book. And it will be only as powerful as you are. And if you're like me, That's not very powerful. You need His power. You need the power of God. This is is not a self-help course. 
We are spiritual beings. And if we live for God, look what happens. Look what happens if we just live our life for God. Romans 8, he says this. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit, if you live in, a, in relationship with God through Christ, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. He says that you need to get close to God and live. And live. Get close to God and, and, and live your life for Him in every area of your life. And the closer you get to God, the more you begin to experience real life. You will live. And Paul goes on right after this. He says in verse 28, And we know that in all things, the mess-ups, the misdeeds, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Give your life to God because He's got a call on your life. He's, he, you know, God's got a call on your life. And I, and I have so many people t- say to me, you know, Molly, really, I don't have anything to live for. What? Yes, you do. God's got a call on your life. Surrender your life to Him and let Him to begin to fulfill His good, pleasing, and perfect will in your life. Uh, you don't have the vantage point that I get right from up here, right? Uh, and, I, and I've said this before, there are a lot of funny looking people in this room. I mean, we're all so different, right? Everybody is unique. God made everybody unique. And you know, that's one of the reasons I'm a little anxious when I get up here. Because I'm a little different. I just am. Right? We all are. I, 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 I'm just a bow-legged preacher with a squeak, right? Who loves Jesus, drives an old GMC, and has a beautiful wife and an ugly jump shot. That's just who I am. But this is what I know. I'm also a treasured child of the Most High God. That's my identity. And if you've surrendered your life to Him, that's your identity as well. And what I'm learning is I, I, I just need to relax in that. And just put my life in the hands of God on a daily basis and worship Him with all that He has made me uniquely to be. And guess what? That's God's will for you as well. Romans 12, 5 and 6 in the message paraphrase says, The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us find our meaning and function as a part of His body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently, excellently formed and marvelous functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without endlessly or, or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. God just takes great delight in watching you be you. And as you live your life for Him and others, it begins to create this urgency, a purpose. You really begin to get a desire to want to, to love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, with all your gumption, and begin to love others in that same way. You begin to live for something that's bigger than just your issues or problems. So that's my challenge to us, to become aware and to realize and to be honest and say, we need some life support. I need some help here. And to begin to see this area of your life where you're drifting, where maybe you're dying or where you're being deceived and make a decision to live. Begin to, to renew that vision of what you and God wants your life to look like in the future. Begin to expose the enemies of that life. Bring some people and involve some other people in that life, in your life, to hold you accountable and just choose to live every day for God. 
Live for Him. Allow Him to do His transformation, His regeneration, His changing in your life so that He can use you in every relationship that He brings to you. Live for Him. Live for Him. Will you do that? Pray with me, please. Maybe for some of you here this morning, that choice to live for God for you means to surrender your life to Him totally and completely. You maybe have known about God and you know God up here in your head, but you never surrendered to Him. You've never surrendered to Him in your heart. And for you to choose to live for God means to surrender everything to Him and to make Him the Lord of your life. Because if you don't, you will know about Him in your head, but not, not in your heart. And you will miss heaven. And you will miss that life that He has for you. So for the choice for you this morning uh, to live for God is to say, God, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. To right now confess that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died on a cross to pay for our sins and that He rose on that third day so so that you and I can be in a forever relationship with God. And so for you right now, you just need to say, I'm going to believe. I'm going to rely on. I'm going to cling to you with everything that I have. And I surrender and ask you to come in and forgive me and become the Lord of my life. And begin to transform me into the person you created me to be. So right now, if that's you, would you just do that? That tugging at your heart is the Holy Spirit saying, hey, I want to be in relationship with you. So would you ask Him to come in and be your Lord and Savior? Make you a child of His. Begin to do His transforming work in you. Maybe you already know Him as Lord and Savior and because of life and because of struggles and all the things that are going on in your life, you begin to, you began to move away from the very thing, the very one that brings life into you. And maybe you're spiritually fatigued right now and instead of running to God, you're kind of like Mary. You're saying, I'm just going to forget you, Jesus. And what He's calling you to do is not to run away from Him, but to run to Him. To surrender every area of your life to Him. Your marriage, your kids, your relationships, your workplace. Surrendering everything to Him and begin to come back and into the body of believers and make a commitment to His church. To make a commitment to be involved in, in, in being around His Word and studying His Word and being with a small group of people that can hold you accountable. Will you do that right now? For you to live for God, that's what you need to surrender everything to Him and come back into a right relationship with Him. Just ask right now for Him to forgive you and to bring you back. Commit that you're going to turn away from the things of the world, from the struggles, from those, those things that you know are not of God and are pleasing to Him and you're going to turn toward Him. And give him all. Father, you hear the prayers of your people. And I, I so thank you, God, that you are a God who responds to us when we pray to you. So, God, for those who are calling out to you and asking you to come into their life as their personal Lord and Savior for the very first time. God, bring assurance into their hearts, even right now. That, God, you are doing your supernatural work through your Holy Spirit, changing their spirit and bringing them into a forever relationship with you and God for us for those of us who just need to quit moving away from you and begin to move back towards you to really begin to pursue you with all of our lives God will you help us 
Will you help us, Father, as we begin to do those different steps and the different relationships of our life? God, will you help us to live for you with everything, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, with a passion, God, with a gumption. May we choose life today, Father. May you bring your support alongside us and help us to be who you want us, who you call us to be. Do your work, Father, in each heart that is open to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to, to speak to you and to your heart and continue to move you toward Him this morning. We're going to stand and we're going to worship together one more time. And as we do, uh, it's an opportunity for you to, to respond. Maybe you've already made decisions in your heart this morning and, and through, that, through our prayer time right, right before this. But now it's an opportunity to kind of put feet to that. To really make a commitment, you know, and to share that with others. Maybe you need to come and share a decision that you made with me this morning so that we as your church can come alongside of you. Maybe you need to take whatever that next step is to allow God to begin to infuse some, some energy, some strength into you, some, some life, to be a part of a body of believers, to make a decision to join the rock, uh, be your family, to follow Him in baptism as your way to testify to others that you are a new creation in Christ. Whatever that decision might be that I know will infuse life back into you. Will you do that? Will you surrender? Will you respond? So let's stand and as we, as we worship Him, you respond. You respond.
Thank you so much for being here this morning, and let me just uh, introduce you to Harvey and Marcy Kornstein. They've come this morning to, to become a part of the Rock Community Church. They've already been. And Sean also, their grandsons, uh, uh, he's a part of us uh, as well and been uh, very active in our student ministry, and God's doing great work in his life as well. So give them a hug and welcome them uh, officially into the Rock family uh, this morning. I just want to encourage you that maybe you've made some commitments in your heart this morning and, and, and maybe take it another step as you walk out into this new week and just begin to ask God, God, what do, you, what do I need to do in order to fulfill this commitment that I made to you and that you're making to me? God, how can I really love you with, with all my heart, soul, mind and strength this week so that I can love others? How can I love others in that? How can I be Jesus to people this week? Allow God to continue to do his work in you, okay? Encourage you to be back here next Sunday as um, Saturday night we'll have our marriage night and then Sunday uh, we'll talk about that very um, wonderful institution of marriage uh, when it comes to family matters. Pray with us as we go into this new week. Joe, pray. Father, we thank you that we can be in your house this morning, Lord, and we thank you for the life that we have in you through Christ Jesus. And I pray that as we would leave here today, we would just be strengthened and we would have the, the confidence to boldly go out and know that you are with us and you are with us always. And we thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus name. Amen. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hand to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down.
Yeah.